Okay, in this video we're going to get some practice with simple square roots to get the hang of rational roots and roots that aren't so easy and how to basically deal with decimal roots. Let's start with number one and then work all the way through number four. If you're doing this for a homework, you might want to pause this and, and write these problems down. And then compare your solutions with mine to see how you did and to see how our approaches differ. Let's start with the square root of 49. Um, when you see the square root of 49, you might think of a square with an area of 49. And that's, that's really what this is saying, that if you have a square with an area of 49, how long is this side right here? And how long is this side? Because the square root of 49 equals the side length. That's what the square root is. Because remember, square roots is saying a number times itself that gives you 49. So you can think of that as area, right? Because if you multiply these, these two unknown numbers, we will get 49. And your job is to find the number that you multiply by itself to get 49. Um, so here, the square root of 49 equals 7. Because 7 times 7 is 49. And here, what you might realize is that, oh, square root of 49 gives me 7, and I can get back to 49 by multiplying 7 by itself, right? Because here we have an inverse operation. The square root of 49 equals 7, but 7 times itself, which is 7 squared, gives us 49. And in fact, that's a really important point. Just like addition and subtraction are inverse operations, another set of inverse operations, which we're just going to introduce here in case you haven't covered this yet is uh, exponents like square and roots and we can keep going with this idea but basically um, when you take an exponent of 2 like 7 squared we get 49 but to take 49 and get back to 7 squared we find the square root of 49 and we can keep going in this loop in this pattern uh, of exponents and roots so using that idea, let's, let's look at the next example, which is the square root of 55. This one's a lot tougher because um, what you might be realizing is that if we have a square with an area of 45, because it has to be a square, not a rectangle, and the area is 45, we're trying to find, oops, we're trying to find a number multiplied by itself that gives us 55. Let's try to do that and see what happens. If I take 7, multiply it by itself, I get 49. Okay, that's too small. I'm trying to find a number times itself that gives me 55. So let me try the next whole number. 8 times 8, which is 64. And oops, that's too big. Uh, so we have to find a number multiplied by itself to get 55. And in fact, you might realize, oh, it's got to be between 7 and 8. So let's start by saying that. The square root of 55 is between... 7 and 8. And that could be my answer, but we can say a little bit more. What's it going to be closer to? 7 or 8? Well, it's going to be closer to 7 because 49 got us only 6 away from our target number of 55. But 64, 8 squared is, is, is 9 away from 55. It's further. So the decimal we're going to use is going to be closer to 7. Right? It's going to be closer to that number, whatever decimal it is. And the weird thing is, is here, if, if we keep trying to approximate, okay, it's closer to 7, so that means it's between 7 and 7.5. we kept trying to narrow it and narrow it and narrow it down, what's going to happen is we're never going to be find, going to be able to find an exact answer. So this has no exact answer. And this is kind of an introduction to irrationality. Numbers, right, that have no exact value. Um, so we can never find a perfect decimal that perfectly multiplies by itself to get 55. And this happens always when you start with a whole number. That's the key. Don't be confused with decimals and other numbers, but if you start with a whole number and you start to find that when you're taking in the square root, the answer is between two whole numbers, it's, it's some other decimal, this has to be what's called, and we'll explain this later, irrational. So this one has no exact value, so we give it a range, and this would be our answer right down here. Okay, up next we have the square root of 63. So we're trying to find a number 
multiply it by itself to give an area on a square of 63. And again, you might see what's happening is that, whoa, that's weird. What's happening is we're not going to be able to find an exact value for this mystery number multiplied by itself to get 63 for the same reason. 7 squared gives us 49, and 8 squared gives us 64. 7 squared is too small, 8 squared is too big, so this mystery number will, will be some decimal in between. This time, when you write your answer, you can say the square root of 63 is between 7 and 8, but much closer to 8, right? 63 is only 1 away from 64. So the decimal we're going to use is going to be very close to 8, but still between 7 and 8. And again, this is irrational. There's no exact value. Now, like I said, don't be confused. Um, just because you start with a decimal, like the square root of 6.25, doesn't mean there can't be an exact value. It's only when you start with a whole number and then you start to see that the answer is not going to be a whole root or square root can you say it's going to be irrational. So now the area is 6.25. What number works? Well, I would say you know, there are algorithms for this, and I'll cover the, that in other videos, but really, really what's happening here is I, I would suggest trying simple guesses, right? So 2 squared is too small, it's 4. And 3 squared is 9, right? That's, that's, that's too large. So 6.25 is, is between 4 and 9. How far is 6.2 away from 4? Well, it's up 2.25. And how far is it down from from nine? Well, it's it's two, right? Because six point two five plus two is eight point two five. It's two point seven five down from nine. So it's very close to sitting halfway between these two. And in fact, my next guess would be two point five. If I take two point five and multiply it by itself, what do I get? Well, I get six point two five, right? Five times five is twenty five. So carry the 2 up here. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 plus 2 is 12. 2 and the 1. Right? And then we stack it over here and keep going. And eventually, well, you know, I'm botching this up. I'm sorry. Let me redo that. This, I'm just using a, a standard algorithm for multiplication. And maybe this is a review for you, so let me, let me do it a little bit slower. 0. 0.5 times 0. 0.5, right? Uh, that's, that's, oops like saying 25, and then 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12, going fast here. Next stack, 2 times 5 is 10, up the 1, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, add these up, we get 5, 2, and 6, two decimal places here, so we compound that, really this is uh, 100 times smaller than 6.25, 625, so the answer is 6.25. Now if you have no idea what I just did right here, let me know. And I'll, I'll make some video lessons about this kind of multiplication and why this makes sense. But I was just doing it there procedurally. So anyway, um, this is a decimal. Doesn't mean it doesn't have an answer, right? We're not going to give you decimals that are super hard to find, but, but here you should recognize that the root of this is 2.5 or 2.5. All right, hope that helped.